Hey guys, Ellie with Tip B again, and right now we are going to look at uh, software for Android 2.1 compared to iOS 4 on iPhone 4. Uh, we looked at hardware. If you didn't see that video, go back and watch that one too. Um, in comparison, and I have an iPhone 3GS right here too because I still have this one running on 3.1.3, so I figure that might be a good comparison. Um, Basically, if you put Android 2.1 next to an iPhone running 3.1.3, I would almost say Android wins. Um, it's a little bit different if you put it next to iOS 4. And I really think that's going to come down to personal preference. Um, I really enjoyed looking at Android. Um, my personal decision, I still prefer iOS 4, and it's probably because of the fact that the one thing that really bugs me is the Mac compatibility. But either way, let's take a look at iOS, or not iOS 4, Android 2.1. Um, one thing I really, really do like about it, and it's something that I really wish Apple would do, um, your home screen is pretty much yours. You can do whatever you want to it. You can have as many home screens as you want. You can add as many widgets as you want. Um, not saying that if you have 80 widgets, it's not going to slow down your phone because obviously it's going to try to load things. Um, basically, your main setup, you're going to have um, an applications button right at the bottom right default. Click that. looks very similar to a home screen on an iPhone. You've got all your apps. Um, while I'm thinking of this and while I see it, I'll point one thing out. They put a lot of bloatware on this phone. Um, AT&T Navigator, AT&T Music, Maps, um, Family Map, things that I don't think need to be there on a brand new phone. If I want them, I'll get them myself. Um, this is one thing I think that Apple doesn't really allow manufacturers to do on their hardware. Um, to get back to your main screen, you can click Home or these buttons down here, and they're not lit up right now. And another thing I had said in a hardware video too, these buttons are on a different timer than the screen and that kind of irritates me. Um, one thing that I really, really like about Android OS is the notifications. Pull that blind down and you can quickly turn off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, silent vibration. Um, you have got all of your notifications here see if I can zoom in a little bit better so maybe you guys can see this or at least focus better um, you got all of your notifications right here and there's a button right here if you can even see that that says clear um, and you can just tap that to clear your notifications as well and then they go away um, when you get a text they'll scroll along this top window which I thought was really cool um, email icons, everything that you get notification wise would be up there. Um, as you can see I have a Twitter widget here that shows me as my feed is updated. I can click down here to refresh that feed. I can click anywhere in here to go into my Twitter application. And I think that's pretty cool that you can do that. Um, with iPhone I would settle for Apple making a better lock screen. I mean, if I could just have notifications on my lock screen so I don't have to unlock my phone without seeing that I have emails, that would be appreciated. Um, as far as Android goes, I do like the option of being able to customize. Um, and just like, say I wanted to add, I don't know, what's one I don't have on my home screen? Clock. Um, if I want to add this to my home screen, all I do is hold it down and it'll drop on one of my home screens. Say I want it on the first one, drag it right there. If I want to get rid of it, hold it down, little trash can, move it in there. It doesn't delete it from my applications, it just deletes it off the home screen. So the process is pretty similar to what you can do on an iPhone, but your home screen's pretty much yours. If I want to add a widget and go to add, Samsung widgets, Android widgets, etc. Um, Android widgets, I can add a G Reader widget, instant messaging, picture frames. As you have, um, this is the Twitter app that I downloaded. Um, when you download those, you'll get the option to choose custom widgets for those as well. Um, 
One thing I did notice in the Android Marketplace, like this app that I have for Twitter, it is available for free, but um, the free version doesn't have a lot of the same features that the paid version does, just like maybe in iPhone applications, you might get ads in free versions or they might be limited. Um, same concept here, you'll have to pay for it. Like a lot of them I noticed, if you don't have the paid version, you can't add widgets. So if you want the widgets, a lot of the times you have to pay for the app, which is fine. Um, that's common. Um, what else do we have to show you here? Email. I'm not too crazy about the email client in here. I don't know why. I'm just, I don't. The tabs are up here. I had a hard time getting my mobile me email on here, which I didn't understand because it's just an IMAP account. But I still had a hard time. I had to change some ports. Um, it received my email just fine. It just didn't want, it didn't want to send email. It would get stuck in the outbox. Um, Let's compare the settings panel here on these two phones. Mm, settings. Okay. Um, to me, the settings with an Android were a little bit confusing. Um, specifically, like sound and display settings. You can have a notification tone for everything imaginable. Um, sometimes when you download apps, it comes with their own set you can pick from. It was just a little bit overwhelming to me where I wish Apple would give us a little bit more options, but I think I was kind of hoping for a happy medium because it kind of reminded me of BlackBerry, how you have 80 billion notification tones to choose from and it just gets irritating at times because every time you have to go through and you know make sure it doesn't have a duplicate from another app if you want them different. Um, here's another thing I think most people probably know this, but just like you can slide to unlock on an iPhone, Android offers um, lock patterns. Um, these are cool if you're not me because I actually um, had originally set up a lock pattern that was a lot more difficult and I kept forgetting it and having to reset the phone so that was kind of a pain. Um, other than that, Mac compatibility, that's probably my number one biggest issue. I had to download two separate apps, um, one for music and while well, for my contacts, I didn't really find an easier solution to just create a Gmail account and export my Mac address book and import it into there and then it, you know, synced wirelessly through Google Sync. Um, other than a lot of basic features, they're very similar. I guess it really just depends on what you want to use. I mean, Apple multitasking, you double tap the home button and you've got all your settings right here for multitasking. Um, Android has true multitasking and the way you use that is you hold down this home button and you'll get a menu showing you what's running in the background. Um, I believe, no you can't hold them down. You have to go in to quit them. Um, you can go into applications and um, they've got some development settings and then they've got running services and you can end those or you can manage the applications in here. And, delete what you want to delete. Um, this phone comes with 16 gigs built in, so I wasn't too concerned with deleting things right off the bat to save space. Um, other than that, let's look. I think I took some pictures to show the gallery. Um, yeah. The gallery is pretty cool. I kind of liked it, how it shows. I think I took a picture of a chair. Not very interesting, but you can rotate just like you can on the iPhone. Um, real quick before I hit 10 minutes and YouTube won't take my video. Uh, keywords. Swipe is really cool. If you've never used swipe before, um, I had a little bit of trouble with it, but not too much. This is how swipe works. Uh, let's go into um, right here. I don't know. Let's type Leanna a text message and say, hey, you kind of just, it picks out what you're trying to type, which is really cool, and you just drag your finger. So if you've never tried swipe before, it's pretty decent, and it works really well. Um, other than that, guys, I'm about to hit 10 minutes, and YouTube will not take my video if I go over that. But if you have questions or want anything else on Android compared to iOS 4, 
uh, let us know. Thanks, guys.